Wilson with another thrilling story from the world of... Sunrise in Uruguay etches the romantic gaucho in the area of South Dakota, much of Uruguay's grasslands, given over to the grazing of sheep and cattle. With 24 million sheep, Uruguay is the third greatest wool exporting country in the world. Here on the San Pedro Ranch are 50,000 sheep of the renowned Timote breed. But by any name, she'd be the nicest little lamb. Monarchs of the grasslands are bulls whose bloodlines trace through more generations than any kings. The grand champion is literally worth his weight in the stuff at Fort Knox, but without the horse, Uruguay's number one industry couldn't survive, an industry that can really be called a game that depends upon work athletes and the toughest horses in the world. Specially bred for stamina and endurance, their horses have the blood of the first horses imported to the Western Hemisphere by the Spanish conquerors in the 17th century. That three-day-old white colt shows traces of Arabian. The Rancho San Pedro, established in 1777, has been in the same family for over a century. Forty different families live on its 50,000 acres, across whose pastures graze 18,000 head of the finest cattle in South America. Frequent visitor to the ranch is the distinguished Uruguayan artist, Enrique Castells Capuro. His genius lies in the ability to capture the dashing spirit of action and excitement that's symbolic of the daily life of the gaucho. The work of Castell is famed the world over, and his dashing style has done much to establish the gaucho as the most romantic figure of Latin American legend. The line of Castell's work appears to move as swiftly as the boleadoras they fling through the air, as rapidly as the galloping horse of which the gaucho seems as much a part as the centaur of mythology. Tending the herds like this one, of some 800 purebred, everyone a prize winner is the daily task of the gaucho the year round. Like the cowhand and his pony on our western plains, the gaucho and his horse are a highly skilled team of athletes. To his job, the gaucho brings a body hardened by outdoor life in the saddle and a fine coordination of mind and muscle attuned to split instant reactions. Without the gauchos, Uruguay's most important industry couldn't be cattle. The work of cutting out a steer or catching a stray can be as much a sport as a rodeo contest. It isn't enough for the gaucho just to know how to ride. He has to train his horse to know the habits of steers, which are the most unpredictable critters. Over the short distance, few racehorses move faster. When they come across a range-born calf, a pair of riders cut him out and chase him towards the branding corral. Calves born on the range often reach the age of three to six months before the gauchos get around to branding. Then it's a matter of a few seconds, and apparently the iron doesn't burn much more than the surface because the calf doesn't protest much. No matter how superbly conditioned he may be physically, the gaucho's absolutely lost a foot. Breaking a horse is more than a sport to him. It's an absolute necessity and a part of the trade that might cost him his neck because that animal is really wild, and it's a toss-up whether man breaks horse or horse breaks man in the general vicinity of the collarbone. The ostrich is a protected bird in Uruguay because it kills all sorts of parasites and is the scavenger of the range. It's as wary an old bird as you'll ever see, and if it sees you, it's gone with the wind and like the wind. Then, even on horseback, just try and catch him. There are the amazing boleadoras, three leather-covered stones tied together with thongs or rope. They're thrown with great skill and accuracy by most gauchos with a swinging motion. They chase the ostrich with no hope of catching it, for using wings on which it cannot fly, the bird can travel up to 70 miles an hour. When it tires, it slows down, and the gaucho lets loose his boleadora, and down goes the bird. They throw for the bird's legs, and when it hits the ground, the legs are all tied up by the boleador. And, mister, it takes big league pitching. 
All the gauchos want are tail feathers, and then they'll turn the uninjured bird loose. Fiesta time in Montevideo. In gaucho-style Sunday best, officials at the Gaucho Society listen to the celebrated gaucho minstrels, the Gamara brothers. First on the agenda, the asado. Good old barbecue to you and me. U.S. housewives, please note, beef is 25 cents a pound down here. Mm, you can almost smell that beef sausage cooking. Who needs a knife and fork? Not the gaucho who's been cutting his meat off at the teeth for years and not a scratch on him. That's no pipe. That's mate, a gourd of tea with a gold straw. And that fellow's pouring vino down the hatch, gaucho style. This part of the program's like an American rodeo, gauchos riding with flags flying. Those baggy pants are called bombachos. Belts are studded with silver, so are bridles and saddles. Although the spectators love the pageantry, all Uruguayans are accustomed to the colorful picture of the gauchos. In towns and cities, they are familiar visitors. The guitar is the traditional instrument, as it is of our cowboys, and their music is as characteristic as our Western songs. Notice that most of the girls have long hair, which is put up in braids. Their gowns are demure, in contrast to the vividly embroidered finery of the men. No crowd of Spanish and Italian ancestry fails to succumb to the charm of the pericon, a gaucho folk dance that stems from the stately minuet. The figures of the dance are called by a master of ceremonies. Music is provided solely by a guitar. Out of the pages of history of a great culture comes the paragon, as do our Western square dances. The paragon is in keeping with the dignity and propriety of Spanish tradition, in which every unmarried girl is chaperoned in public and the code of the caballero handed down from the days of chivalry. The gaucho, a rough customer at work, is polite and even courtly in his social life. Bull riding is strictly for show purposes, rodeo stuff, for no gaucho or vaquero, the translation of cowboy, ever has any need to ride such ornery beasts. Gauchos just can't stop sipping their mate. Hey, we got away from our rider, and he seems to be getting quite a jolt out of it. This is what's called on the horns of a dilemma, and the sooner they get him off, the better for his insurance agent. The crowd loves the rough stuff, and the bulls give them their money's worth. Comes the time when even gauchos reach the end of their rope. The spectators come to get a kick out of the bronc busting, but the rider hopes he doesn't. That horse isn't hyped up with anything, but just pure instinctive meanness. Looks like that horse is shilling for a funeral director. Another horse and rider coming up and going down. An old trick, and the gaucho falls for it. All these wild horses have their B.A. degree. B.A. for bad actor. Hat off and throw it to your lady fair if you can stay on 10 seconds. And you don't even get your hat back. What a spot for a Blue Cross salesman. He knew all along he'd get it, in the end. When the horse goes down like that, the danger is that he might take a notion to roll over on the rider instead of getting up. This one bucks like a fury with a fire built under it, man. That horse has more spine-twisting tricks than a chiropractor. Hey, mister, you dropped your hat. That sport, fans, is bronco-busting, gaucho-style. Now, no hands and no head if he isn't careful. A salute to the horses, that's real sportsmanship. This is wild horse riding bareback without even a bridle. The horse heading for the rail and the gaucho can't quite make up his mind what to do, which sort of leaves him on the fence. 
sunrise to sunset, a real working athlete, the gaucho of Uruguay. Thank <laughs> you.